beautiful Virgo friends and welcome to your horoscope for 2021 or Virgo man this year it is like lose control that's the song I keep hearing in my head like it is just not going to be the traditional old follow the path follow the plan kind of year and I know that 2020 was probably like wow okay we've had the reset the bottom kind of fell out we've had to reshuffle but in 2021 you stay surrendered to win here and it actually lets you pick up the pieces of 2020 and see which ones to do things with, which ones are valuable, which ones are useful to you. And that is really important, I think, for you this year, Virgo, as we travel through 2021. Now, I also think that home and work become big focus for you this year. It seems like you're making some big shifts or big decisions in this particular area of your life. And I want you to keep in mind that home can also mean home. You live here in your body, your physical body, your emotional and mental well-being and foundation, what makes you feel secure. And work can be, let's say you're retired. It's what you're doing in the world, what we know you for, what's your reputation. So think big when you're listening to this because wherever you're at, Virgo Energies, this seems to be the theme that's playing out for you, whatever it actually looks like in that material reality for you, okay? All right, Virgo, so as we're coming into the year, we've got Mars moving out of that energy of Aries where it's been good, it's been great, it's been really close to the Earth. So there has been a lot happening during that retrograde time especially. But now it's going to move out of that energy of Aries and into Taurus. So as Mars is in Taurus, the things that are steady, the things that we were already working on, we're going to have energy to make them steady. Now, remember, Mars in Taurus is not always particularly comfortable because he's like, Taurus, please move faster. But you have a fair amount of compassion and empathy for that fellow Earth sign that I think you'll actually enjoy the pace of how Mars needs you to move here. And it needs to be slower because as Mars moves into this ninth house, it's moved out of your eighth house where some kind of new joint connection or some new rebirth has happened. And as he's moving here in the ninth house, you're going to need this for your expansion. You're going to need time to learn to move in this new way. You're going to need time to rethink, to re-strategize your activities that you're doing in the ninth house area. Publishing, marketing, broadcasting, learning, your ideas and your, your ideals and your beliefs, foreign language, foreign travel, all of that. Things that are a little bit different for you but take you beyond the horizon you've experienced before is what Mars is going to be helping you with in this ninth house space here. Now, Uranus is also in the ninth house, so I know that in this last year or so, Virgo, some really electric, exciting, new, innovative things likely blew into your ninth house area, and you've been learning to use them, but now you're going to be learning to use them in a different form. So whatever that looks like for you, from education to having babies to legal services, apply that idea that as Mars is here, you need the time at that slower Tauran pace to really learn to make this thing deep and juicy and steady for yourself because there's gems when you dig down and get into that earth, okay? Mercury, your ruling planet, is also going to retrograde this year three different times, January, May, and September. Now, this time it's going to be in all air signs this year. So we move away from some of that emotionality that we've had 2019, 2020 of the water signs. And now we're into the head. We're into the thinking. And I think a lot about um, your mutable energy in these um, retrogrades that not only is it your ruling planet, but also in this mutable way, your thinking and your ideas are going to ask to be mutable. They're going to be asked for you to review how flexible you can be with those things to adjust them to be what they need to be next. You're in new territory this year, Virgo. So what's the way you need to pivot in order to make it last or to make it work? Where do you need to surrender to win that maybe it's not in your control and your plan, but it's perfectly on time as well. So I think those will be interesting retrogrades for you to take advantage of seeing how you can adjust and pivot just even the thinking. Now we've got Saturn and Uranus, and these are the big ticket items for the year. They are squaring each other between the energy of Aquarius and Uranus being over here in Taurus. So what we're going to see is your sixth house and your ninth house coming together in a clash and being pushed under tension. Now the square is the 911 aspect of the zodiac, right? Of the uh, of astrology. It says, "Hey, do something. I'm being squished here, right? Get me out of this box. So that is exactly what Saturn and Uranus, as they square each other, are doing it. But they're doing it in Aquarius and Taurus, which are both fixed energies. So between your sixth house of daily routines, health, 
wellness, including your mental health. You are ruled by Mercury. I very much so consider your mental health here. Service to other people's daily routines, things like that live in the sixth house. Now that is going to square and put pressure with this ninth house energy expansion what you think remember sometimes in the ninth house we can think that we know the answers we have the answers right i've already learned this it can also be that publishing marketing broadcasting so as these two are squished and they're squaring together here one of the things that i think happens for you is that you're looking around and you're going well hold on does my daily routine make sense or do I feel trapped? Do I feel like I can't breathe in this daily routine? And that is a big deal because you are going to pop yourself out of that box. Now, what I can tell you about the Saturn Uranus square is, first of all, they're going to happen in February, June, and December. And I'll keep you posted all the way through when they're coming and what's happening. Do not resist against them. Be flexible. Be as uh, mutable and adaptable and creative as you can with this energy because it brings changes that you don't always want to get down there in the root of, but they need to happen. You need to say, I can't be responsible for absolutely everything. Where can I take my hands off of something, right? Where can I be willing and rise to the challenge of surrendering to win here, to let go of having to have everything be in control and where do I get to experience the freedom that comes with that? But again, these are fixed energies. So these are ideas and concepts you've had grounded down in you for a very long time and this energy is trying to shake them out of fixed energy hands. So it can be a bit of a challenge. So I just want to tell you, be adaptable, be creative. There's innovative, creative solutions available to you. And between your sixth house and your ninth house, I think too, if there are projects or things that you do in your daily routine that don't seem like they have a lot of value, um, you're probably going to end up putting those things down or they will just be taken from you because there's just no way for you to actually make that work. That square is actually trying to help you, okay? When we get to May 13th, we are going to see July, July. When we get to May 13th through July 28th, we're going to see Jupiter <laughs> taking a step into the energy of Pisces. So this is going to light up across the street, that seventh house place. So this is all about relationships. And as Jupiter jumps in here into Pisces in this time frame, it's like an expansion of your relationships. It, it's a, a special, I feel like Jupiter acts as a guardian angel, but he rules the energy of Pisces. So he's very comfortable here acting as kind of this guardian angel to your partnerships, to your new connections. I think a new partnership of you with you is very important, but also helping you to understand that the surrender to win concept actually works here because it's what allows relationships to come into you and teach you these ninth house expansive, expansive things that you wouldn't learn otherwise. Surrender to win is really the way that you're going to find a lot of success this year, okay? Now, now, as we get into the eclipse season starting May 26th, we're going to see the eclipses happening between the Gemini and Sagittarian energies. So in the energies of Sag, this lights up the fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, that internal security, but home, home becomes on the old, on the table for our conversation and in the energy of Gemini. This is 10th house, so this is work. So we definitely see there's a little bit of an unpredictable but needing to shift sense in the home and the work. So for some of you, as we see the um, lunar eclipse happening May 26th and we see the other one happening December 4th, this could definitely tell you that there is a move happening. There is a change of your home happening. Jupiter, the ruling planet of Sagittarius, he, his energy will impact these lunar eclipses that happen. Because what's going to happen is you get a lunar and a solar eclipse and Jupiter is over there going, okay, let's change this relationship. And then he says, oh, okay, well, well, let's make an adjustment over here to this daily routine. So it almost feels like it's an addition to of a relationship to what you're doing in your life. And you're going to learn to expand out around that, whether that be collaborations or children or you get married or you get divorced, whatever the relationship shift is for you this year, Virgo. It's really a telling set of energy that you're going to shift there over that next six months. Now, I will also tell you because this is Sagittarius and because Jupiter plays a role in this, it's really important for you to allocate your resources this year, Virgo. It is really important. Do you have enough money for that? Fine, maybe you do. But do you have enough energy for that? Do you have enough personal time for that particular thing and that activity. And this is again where relationships come in. If you need help this year, or if you need to um, 
delegate some things, do so. There's a whole tribe of spiritual, protected, helpful people out there waiting to participate with you and waiting for you to participate with them as you form these new relationships. I think it's absolutely beautiful. That solar eclipse that's going to happen in Gemini is going to be up in the 10th house. So I think this is something meaningful for you. And more so than just thinking about it in terms of career, I'm also thinking about um, this energy in the ninth house. It's like publishing, marketing, broadcasting, and now we know you as a publishing, marketing, broadcasting person. We know you as a translator. We know you as a teacher. You take on like a different role or reputation that we know you as, but it comes from this expansion that you've made. It comes from this new thing that you've learned that has taken you or is taking you beyond your horizon. So I absolutely love that for you. Now, when we get to um, November 19th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening at 27 degrees of Taurus. So this is kind of our, our shake up one for you, but this is also in that ninth house. So from November moving forward in that six month time frame, what are you putting out? What are you bringing to a close in terms of your publishing, marketing, broadcasting, sales, um, travel, learning? Are you finishing an educational program? What are you doing that you're closing down at that time that down this next six months is going to actually be a source of joy, beauty, balance, and I think something valuable even in terms of tangible assets to you as well. So that'll be a beautiful shift that happens here, but it supports you developing something out there that is, is pretty big or allowing something to come to an end that stops you from expanding out bigger than where you are. As we get towards the end of the year, we get to December 19th, we're going to see Venus taking a retrograde in the energy of Capricorn. So she's going to retrograde for about six weeks. So into 2022, now in the energy of Capricorn, this lights up your fifth house space. So this is self-expression, joy, play, true love, children, conception, all of these things happen over there in the fifth house. So as Venus is taking this retrograde and going back over this area, we're going to, we're going to revise and re-edit and reconnect and review the value value. The value of what? How am I achieving Capricorn in this particular area? So, you know, one of the things in the fifth house I think of is go back to your joy. What brought you joy before? What did you maybe put down before and you got to go back to it? What, what did, was there something you were working on that had value and you always thought, oh, if I can make money off of this, I would love to do this. And it's really outside of the control box or something like that. And you're like, I feel like I need to go back to it. Capricorn is here. Capricorn is walking with Venus through this retrograde. So he's like, hold on. We weren't mature enough to do that then, but I bet we could do something with that now, Venus. Let's take a look at that, right? Capricorn's going with you. There's a mature, solid energy that is walking with this Venetian energy to really not be super emotional, but see what can still have value. This is financial value. This is relationship value. This is the value of making you remember how beautiful you are, Virgo. So I think that this retrograde is going to be absolutely beautiful. And I also think it is a morning time in a way for you Virgos because in the fifth house and Venus is retrograde here it's almost as if you're shedding something like you say goodbye to a piece of your youth and you replace that with something that is the current um, beautiful valuable ready to roll as Venus comes out of retrograde version of who you've become at this time it's a really a position of great love I think so I look forward and to seeing what you do that allows you to achieve with more ease as that Venus is retrograde. Now, as we close out the year, we get to December 29th and we see Jupiter popping back into the energy of Pisces for its stay through 2022. Venus coming here, Venus, Jupiter coming here into Pisces for the stay will make an expansion to this seventh house area. I mean, new people could be coming into your life, new spirituality, you know, new I, in Pisces. I think of music. I think of children. I think of the elderly. I think of our ancestors, you know, new challenges that come with, with, with Pisces energy. Where do you feel like some things are vague and you'll learn to step up to those, but Jupiter does want to expand out, but he's that beautiful guardian angel as well. So where you are expanding in a very unpredictable year, 
and you're surrendering to win here. You're surrendering to win because the big deal is that it's time to have a new tribe of people. It's time to have a different um, feel in your relationships. You know, whether that be that you get married this year, you get divorced and you go in a different way, you form business partnerships, you form a different partnership with yourself by the end of this year. This Jupiter and Pisces is, I think, really offering you the opportunity to engage with... Um, with a spirituality around your relationships that maybe wasn't available for before something soft it's a surrender to win or bring it to culmination because i don't have the right relationship i'm i'm out of balance i feel like this area of my life is vague and i need to put it down so i think it's going to be a big and important year for you i think every year we get is important and significant but it is definitely one that will challenge um challenge your mind, challenge your routine, challenge what you thought you know, but it is also going to crack you open, Virgo, in a way this year for your expansion that is pretty much guaranteed in a way that you would have maybe never even thought to do it. And the way that you never thought to do it, that's what we call magic. All right, Virgos, I love you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets on Patreon, on Facebook, on Instagram, in the weeklies, in the monthlies, and everywhere that I can see and connect with you, Virgos, okay? Have an absolutely beautiful year, and I'll see you soon. Bye, Virgo.